Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff stage at CES 2016. Uh, my name's Guy Cocker, I'm the Global Editor-in-Chief of Stuff. I'm joined by uh, Tom over here as the Deputy, de uh -huh. Deputy Editor, excuse me. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, yeah. And Fraser, who is the Consulting Editor. Hello. Uh, so this is the Stuff Wearable Awards uh, for, for CES. Guys, just tell us a little bit about the awards and uh, how you've judged them. You've been running around the show all week. Well, yeah, a couple of years ago, we, uh, we identified that wearables are going to be one of the biggest uh, trends in technology over the next decade or so. So we uh, right. very cunningly snapped up the CES Wearable Tech Awards uh, position. And so um, for the last couple of years, we've been running around trying to find the best, the most interesting, uh, pioneering wearables, not necessarily the biggest brands right. or the biggest selling, but just things that are interesting uh, and make you uh, want to get involved, really. Cool, okay. So uh, we're gonna go to the first uh, award, <laughs> which is for the Misfit Ray. So tell us a little bit about the Misfit Ray. So Misfit have always concentrated on uh, industrial design. Do you agree with that, Tom? I would say, I would say that's true. So their, their first wearable was this uh, little coin-shaped, uh, the Misfit Shine, which was, uh, at the time, it was really minimalist. Yeah. Um, but the only drawback with that is that some of us have quite nice watches that we like to wear. Right. So the Misfit Ray is designed uh, to be a little bit more uh, unobtrusive, so it can sit next to a watch, can sit on without a watch. Right. Mm -hmm. It's nice looking, and yet it has all the same functionality as the uh, Misfit Shine 2. And can be worn, I think, as a pendant and uh, on your boot You can put it on your laces right, if you Right, okay, want. so it doesn't have to be on your wrist. Yep, you can take the band out and, and replace it. But it's got uh, activity and sleep, uh, it's water resistant. Right. It's a really nice little the, thing. The works, basically. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys, I should have said at the top of this session, uh, all of the coverage of our awards will be available on stuff.tv. And uh, the hashtag, if you're on Twitter, is Stuff Wearable Awards, if you want to tweet about the awards. Um, so, anything else to add about the Misfits? I think, I think just what makes it different, different is that it's, it can be used as kind of a companion to a, to a standard sort of watch. Um, and I think that, that makes it really interesting. I mean, we know that at the moment there's, there's a kind of, you, you still have to sort of choose a smartwatch or a fitness watch. Yeah. So you can have your smartwatch and you can have better fitness tracking using the Misfit. Right. And that makes it quite interesting and different. Okay, good stuff. Uh, so that's the Misfit Ray. Uh, what is the go next? to the next the one. Next one. <laughs> uh, so this is the Garmin Phoenix HR. Uh, so the, it's the, um, this is basically a, a newer version of the Phoenix 3, and the Phoenix 3 is, I'd say, probably the best fitness watch out there. It's, um, especially if you're into stuff like triathlon, because it's so good at tracking all the different sports. The only problem with the existing Phoenix 3 is it did Right. This one does. Right. So they've added that. Usually you'd expect to lose loads of battery life by doing that. And it, there's a small sacrifice here, but it's really not massive. Right. And it can make such a difference. I mean, as, as you guys know, uh, heart, adding heart rate tracking makes such a difference the way you can train, especially if you're into something like triathlon. But it does other sports as well. It, it can be used as a golf watch and that kind of thing. I don't know how much your heart rate goes up during golf. <laughs> I, I guess it depends how annoyed you get. But you're a, you're a, triathlete, a triathlete man, aren't you? It you're doesn't look like it at the moment. <laughs> it's been a while since I did any serious training. But um, yeah, and I use the Garmin Phoenix 3 most of right. this year for, for training. Um, and it's... It's really, it, it's a super watch, and adding, uh, adding heart rate tracking just, just it's, sort of, the it closes, the, closes that one spec gap that the it has. Icing on the cake. Are you about to take up a triathlon off the back of this, Fraser? Or I'm not, no, but right. I, I love, uh, it's a real geek's watch. There's so yeah. many things you can do with this. The level of, of data and recording that you can do with this, you could just lose yourself in the submenus for... For days, right. which is the kind <laughs> of thing I dream. do quite regularly. So. <laughs> okay. uh, but no, no triathlons. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next award, uh, which is the Copen Solos. Copen Solos. So this is a, another one that... So this is good, because everyone was thinking it was just going to be things for your wrist, right. and then, ah, oh, there's another seven of these, oh my God. Uh, this, is, again, this is something that really appeals to me um, from a cycling point of view. So it's, um, it, think of it kind of like, uh, a Google Glass, Google Glass heads-up display kind of thing for specifically for cycling. Right. So you can get all of your cycling data delivered straight, basically straight straight to the eye. But the thing that they've done here that's interesting is this is very much a hardcore cycling pair of glasses. So they've been in wind tunnels, making sure there's no extra resistance caused by this thing. Right. And I think anybody who tracks their cycling at the moment will know 
that you basically either have to fiddle about with a, with a, a phone in your pocket yeah. or mount it yeah. uh, to, to the, your handlebars. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a massive fan of mounting, uh, mounting iPhones yeah. to, uh, to a bike. Um, so I, th I think this is going to be a really, really, really good thing for serious, serious cyclists. Do you not still need your phone on you to, to you, make you it work? You will need your phone on you, but the point is you don't have to drag out your pocket to find out if you're going fast enough, that right. kind of thing. You don't have to worry about... I mean, actually, you, you also do get audio feedback as well, right. and, there's a, a, and there's a microphone in there, so you can use it. You can use uh, voice commands uh, and get feedback through the ears as well. Right, okay. Really cool thing. There's a lot of these kind of glasses at CES this year. There's uh, equivalents for skiing as well, Fraser. Are these going to be big this year, do you think? Well, yeah, a couple of years ago, Google Glass was happening. Everyone was talking about it. Um, but that because Google Glass the program has lost momentum slightly or been taken in a slightly weird direction. It opens up the opportunity for other manufacturers with really unique ideas to get involved, whereas before they might have been a bit scared right. to take on the big G. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we've got this. We've got a, a company, Recon, who makes some really interesting uh, eye-based wearables as well. They've got a new paintball mask. Uh, but we, we just uh, love this for the, the, the level of attention it gave to one focused thing. That's cool, because I haven't actually personally heard, heard of uh, Copin before. No, a new one yeah. on us, I'll be honest. Um, right. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see when it comes out uh, and all that kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's priced at sort of $500, so it's definitely, okay. uh, it's a premium. It, it's definitely uh, sort of a niche premium, uh, premium product for people who are really serious about cycling. Sure. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next one, which is the Withings Go, which we had on the stage earlier. Yes. Earlier so this is, uh, a lot of people are interested in wearables, but... The cost might be too much. We've had a couple of things already that were $500 or so, which is, you know, it's big money for, for people who've got kids, responsibilities, food, <laughs> you know, other things to worry about. Right. Whereas this, uh, I believe, is going to be about 70 US dollars. So right, yeah. we're hoping about 50 pounds in the UK. Um, and it's a small fitness tracker. It's got an e-ink screen, which is super readable, for one thing, but also really efficient. So yeah. one little... CR2032 button battery. That's one of your favorite batteries. I, I like the CR2032. The 2035 is quite nice as well. It's a little yeah. bit thicker. Um, but that means it can last for up to eight months. Yeah. So anyone who's got an Apple Watch uh, and, <laughs> and stopped wearing it after about a week because the charger thing was just a bummer, yeah. uh, this will go for eight months without asking you to do anything. It's also, uh, it's also waterproof as well, so you so can you use it yep. for swim tracking. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it does swim. And, uh, and you, it's got various straps and everything, so you can wear it kind of anywhere. Uh, and I just think it looks really nice. Yeah. I really like the, the kind of pastel case. Yeah. E-ink screens, love them. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, you can have it kind of the, the screen kind of black on white and white on black, and you can have yep. a clock come up as well. Yeah. It's, I think it's addressing that issue that a lot of people have with uh, fitness trackers, that they're maybe a little bit difficult to use or... Yeah, kind of demanding. demanding. That's the last yeah. thing you want. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, I really like the Withings Go as well. Very cool. Uh, let's check out the next product. Ah, which is Casio, Casio the snappily titled WSD hyphen F10. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is Casio's first Android Wear yeah. smartwatch. Right. Um, now, the most interesting thing about actually, there's two, there's three, there's many interesting things about this. <laughs> I'll start with the display. Uh, it's got dual layer display. So what you're seeing there is the color LCD that you'd expect of a of a fully fledged smartwatch. But actually, you can deactivate that and just have a normal monochrome right. display. The advantage of that is uh, battery life, of course. So you can, I believe, go for about a month if yeah. you just use the monochrome display. Right. I don't have that kind of willpower. <laughs> I, I think we'll you be turning the on the, the jazzy full color display. Right. Um, Casio have geared this towards uh, the outdoors right. market. So Casio, of course, famous for their multi-sensor watches, their ProTrek watches. So this similarly has barometer and compass, altitude, all of those things. If you ever get out of the office, <laughs> which we rarely do. Is, this, uh, is that what in HG is? I have to admit, I don't know what this, uh, this number on the, on the main display here. Oh, in who HG. knows? 32,004. That's, uh, that's your barometric pressure. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's good to yeah. know. That's good yeah. to know. Yeah. So uh, that's that? showing <laughs> up with trend. Uh, in your barometric pressure. And uh, what did you think of the design when you guys saw this? You quite nice. Like it? So it, it's a big, chunky thing. It's right. waterproof to 50 meters, which okay. is quite unique for a uh, proper Android, yeah. Smart, yeah, yeah. Uh, Android Wear smartwatch. Um, it comes in red and black and green, you know, nice uh, sort of outdoorsy colors. Right. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> that famous outdoorsy colour, red. Um, but you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. You, whatever you camouflage, man. Whatever you camouflage. <laughs> It'll do it. Anything to add, Tom? No, I just think it, I think it's a really nice thing. I think I think the outdoor, uh, the focus on the outdoors is really useful. And as I said, we we're yet to really find um, a watch that's both an awesome smartwatch and an awesome uh, yeah. fitness or health tracker or sport tracker. Um, could this be the one? Uh, it looks really, it looks really promising. Cool. All right. Let's move on to the next award. Uh, which is the Fitbit Blaze. Uh, Fitbit yes. Blaze. This, is, this is the one that caused the Fitbit stock to, to dip. It is. I let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. Is that warranted or is that? No. No. Not I in our eyes, I don't think. No, I think the, the design, when you see it, actually, it looks better in real better. I don't know what's what happened to my enunciation. <laughs> I've gone all London. It looks better. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you see it in real life than right. it perhaps does in images. So, you know, I would encourage people to go to the stand and have a look at it. Right, right. There's different uh, strap materials. You can, you can pop the middle of it out and, and change straps. Right. Um, and so I, we just think it's a, a really nice thing. And, you know, Fitbit is a company that's been in this game for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So you know that their apps are going to be good. You know that the, the recording is all going to be good. So. Yeah. I'm a fan of the Blaze. Yeah, uh, Fitbit do have a good kind of ecosystem and lots of yeah, other it, fitness it, it, products. It again comes back to that that possibility that this could be one of those uniting products mm. because uh, Fitbit are so good at all of the fitness tracking. Uh, the fact that they're now doing a watch that th this could be the holy grail. Right. Uh, it could be the Casio. It could be the Fitbit. Right. But that, we're all sort of heading in that direction now, sort of combining the health tracking and the uh, and the usual uh, sort of smartwatch functions. So yeah, this. It's looking good, and it's and it's a good price as well, two hundred dollars. Right. Okay. So that's not too bad for a full color. Not at all. I mean, compare mm. that to a lot of the big smartwatches, an Apple Watch, for example, right, right. and that looks really good value. Are there any specifics that kind of stood out in terms of it, what it does in terms of fitness for this product? Uh, everything you would want it to is the answer. Right. So uh, activity, sleep tracking. It's got a heart rate monitor. So you know, everything you want it to, without being too expensive, too bulky, or too. I think uh, up to a week battery yeah. life as well. Okay. I, I heard. Yeah, Which, and I again, it looks, it looks, it look, it, Apple I look, Watch, pictures, Apple Watch. <laughs> pictures don't really do it justice. Right, so, go and, so, much so go and check it out well worth checking on out. the Fitbits yeah. stand. Definitely. Definitely go and have a look at it in real life. In real life. In actual go, life. Go check it out. Uh, all right, next award. Uh, which is the Hexoskin yeah. Smart Shirt, which again we have. That's not wearable, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what, you wear a shirt? It's more wearable than... Um, we had this on the stage earlier. I was interviewing um, uh, the guys from Hexoskin, and yeah, uh, yeah. it sounded really interesting. They, I can't wait to try it out. I, I, I think, I'm going to say I think this is one of, if not my favorite things of the, of the show this wow. year. I think it's a wow. big statement from yeah, Tom's awesome. Favorite thing of the show. Favorite thing of the wow. show. Um, I think it's fantastic. It's, um, so you wear it, I mean, you can just train using that. You can wear it under a, a normal shirt or whatever. Um, it'll last, the battery life is like 30 hours. Right. Um, so this is instead, instead of wearing uh, a heart rate monitoring strap yep. and a fitness device yep. and those weights on your ankles that I never really understood. <laughs> no, no, forget the weights. There's nothing to do with weights. Uh, uh, this has all the recording stuff built into the shirt. There's nothing yep. touching your skin apart from fabric. Yep. And on top of the usual um, fitness tracking stuff, uh, heart rate and, and that kind of thing, it'll also monitor your breathing uh, and perspiration. Right. And one of the demos we saw earlier, in real time on the uh, app, you can see your lung function, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a really, really incredible thing. I, it, I think it will let you really dive deep into, uh, into your training metrics. I love metrics. Um, but also, you can wear it at night, yeah. and it will monitor your sleep patterns, and also how well you're breathing overnight. So um, I it, it, it's, it's looking like a really, really advanced fitness tracker it's, it's very good it's the real-time data you get when you see yourself and you're breathing and your yeah. heart rate it's very very I, I can't believe we've had to wait until 2016 <laughs> in order to get a real-time display of our lung function <laughs> exactly <laughs> and when and, you, but it looks I so mean pretty. forget hoverboards right. this is <laughs> we're in it. the future now kids <laughs> yeah it's on <laughs> uh, so you think you can see yourself using this for running though Tom, I, I, I would say so I mean so what you can do is th there's there's a sort of device component and there's a shirt component right and you can buy more shirts um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I, d I don't wear a single shirt for 30 hours at a time, so <laughs> I, I'd like the idea of being able to swap out every so often. Uh, but yeah, I think you can use it for serious training, but I, th I think the sleep monitoring aspect is really interesting as well. Uh, one of the things that uh, we talked about on stage was, was the price. It's not a, a cheap device, but no. you can it's being crowdfunded essentially at the moment. And yeah, it's so at the moment, they're on Indiegogo. Yeah. Um, 
So you can, you can purchase through Indiegogo. There's a, there's a good offer on there at the moment. Um, I think I'm right in saying it works out $300 for the full kit and something like 170 for extra shirts. For extra shirts, I yeah. think that's, that's right. about right, yeah. Um, and I, I think it's really cool. It's, it, it's definitely not cheap. I mean, but this is, uh, this is kind of uh, fitness tech on the edge. Uh, yeah. And you're going to have to spend a bit of money on it at this point. But this kind of tech, I mean, that's one of the reasons why this gets an award because it's this kind of tech shows us the future yeah. of wearables. Yeah, hopefully one day it'll be kind of built into all shirts or I don't know if that's all even, shirts, all shirts <laughs> yeah. can tell us how, we, yeah. how we're breathing. <laughs> that's the dream. That that's is yeah. the dream that for Fraser at least. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, the UA Health Box, I don't know much So about Under Armour, yeah, Under Armour, massive brand in the States, just uh, sort of getting more uh, appearance in the UK. Yeah. This is uh, the Health Box, so right. in one box, one box. You've got everything you need to go from your current rough state to a new buff state. Right. Uh, <laughs> the they, can have, they can have that. If they're here, by the way, you can have that slogan. Um, <laughs> the, cent the central part of it is this band that you can see, which is the UA band, designed by HTC. Uh, so that does all your activity uh, tracking and all of those kind of things. Right. But also in the box, you get the heart rate strap that we just said that we don't like wearing, <laughs> um, but sometimes we do. <laughs> when you want to get, uh, if you're doing a proper workout and you want to get a, a deeper level yeah. of, of how unfit you are. Uh, <laughs> and then if you really want to make yourself feel miserable, there is also <laughs> in the box uh, a set of scales. Right. Uh, the kind of scales that measure your body fat percentage, which uh, if anyone's ever done is, is, is really depressing. Yeah. So is this... But it, useful. Is yes. this, Tom, is this Under Armour really arriving with this? Because they've made a lot of investments in apps and... Uh yeah, I, I think they've been threatening for a while yeah. in, terms of, in, in terms of moving into a lot of new uh, sort of sectors and a lot of tech. Um, the fact they've partnered with HTC, I think, is really interesting for the wearable. Because they've got great design history. Absolutely, HTC, yeah. really, really good. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, looking, it's looking really interesting. And the fact that it is a sort of a, a one-box solution that takes in a number of products, that is going to make it relatively expensive. You, yeah. you but are going to be able to buy the components separately as okay, well. Right. It's just, I think, at the beginning, they're selling the box idea as just being a nice, neat introduction to someone. Right. Yeah. A $400 and it's pro introduction. Probably, joined, nice probably sort of joined up. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think rather than buy one bit from here and one bit from there and hope that they kind of talk to each other, this is something that's designed to work together out of the box. So you guys have seen this. Do you, do you think that's the right approach to do it as one box or buy it incrementally if you're going to pick it up? Go the whole hog. Go the whole way, yeah. Yeah, yeah go yeah, the whole way, hog, get the box. I, and um, yeah, the fact that those all link up, because all of these things um, work together to, to give you a, a sort of more rounded sense of, of how your training's going, yeah, yeah. Um, how your health is. And I think that that is uh, an advance over just a standard uh, wrist warm wearable. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the Under Armour Health Box. Uh, let's move on to the next award. Uh, this is the Mio Slice. Uh, Fraser, Mio tell us slice. about the Mio Slice. What is the biggest barrier to becoming fit? <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Yeah, pie. Pie. <laughs> pie. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Um, so uh, certainly in the early days of wearables, and perhaps still now, a lot of people buy the wearable, they set a 10,000 step uh, day yep. challenge to themselves, and they nail it day after day, and they're like, yes. Right. Uh, and then a couple of weeks later, they can't understand why they're not, the <laughs> weight's just not dropping off them. Uh, and that's because steps on their own are not a great uh, indicator of how much effort you're putting in. Right. Uh, so Mio have come up with a new, uh, I'm going to use the term metric. Again. Apologies. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a new buzz phrase that everyone's using. And this metric is uh, pi, is it? Is pi, yeah. Right. P-A-I, Personal Activity Intelligence. Uh, and now that combines your steps. Uh, with your resting heart rate, your uh, total heart rate when you're, when you're working out, uh, and it combines those using science. It's not just you know, right. some Jumbo kind of Jumbo. ramshackle <laughs> formula that they've come up with. Uh, using actual real science um, to just give you a score that is more uh, useful to you so you know at the end of the week how much effort you've actually put in. Right. And then you can see the weight dropping off. Right, so this is going to replace steps. Because everyone yeah. knows 10,000 steps is kind of your baseline. It's we it, we it, moved it, to pi. With steps, um, yeah, it's useful. So they've got the, this slice wearable. is a new one that they're created um, to work with this, this pi metric. Um, their existing wearables uh, will also be able to uh, record pi. 
but this is the one that will show it on the screen and right. um, be part of your sort of weekly workout schedule. Cool. And what do you think of the, the purple coloring here? The, is there multiple options? Purple. Is there I'm are all, lots I'm of options. Always a fan options. of purple. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. There's, a, there's a gray and black one okay. that, that's a bit, a bit more subtle, maybe. Cool. But come on, you look great. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Uh, all right. Are we? Uh, I think we we're on our last one. We're our last award. <laughs> Unless I can no longer uh, count, which is possible. Which is for the uh, Fit Cat Ultima Plus. Well, this is a nice one to end on yeah. because all of the previous nine have been wearables that you might buy for yourself. Yeah. Which is a very technology thing to concentrate on yourself. This is a wearable that you might buy for someone else. Isn't that right, Tom? It is. I think um, uh, you, could, you could still buy it for yourself. And it does all of the uh, standard health tracking that you kind of expect. <laughs> um, so <coughs> it'll do your heart rate, steps, all of that stuff. Um, but it also does things like um, gives you reminders to drink water and right. take your medication. And on top of that, you can use the app to, uh, to create guardians, essentially. Um, so you can elect somebody else from your family or family or friends uh, to also receive the data. So they can kind of track how, how you're doing, um, how your heart rate is, all of that kind of stuff. And it also includes um, an SOS button. Right. So get into any bother at all. Press one button, and up to five guardians will immediately know that something's up and can hopefully do something about it. Right, hopefully, they live okay. nearby. So, so FitCat are working with healthcare providers. Right. Uh, so, residential care homes and the like. Right. Um, so, you might put this uh, on the elderly. Right. Uh, in order so that you, um, so it will remind them to stay hydrated, to take their medication, sure, sure. Uh, and, uh, but it also means that you, as the dutiful son yeah. or daughter yeah. uh, can, can see that from afar as well right, and, right. and receive that SOS if they feel that they're in some kind of need. Absolutely. It seems um, like a really good, useful product. Yeah, for, and uh, um, only $129. Right. So we're hoping yeah. kind of £100 in the UK. So right. that's the kind of money you could, you know, that, that most people could afford to spend to, to help kind of a, assist in the care of somebody else. But as right. you said, it does all of the usual stuff as well. So if you just want it for yourself, that's all good. And again, yeah. uh, FitCat, a new name for on the market, really. I've not seen yeah, Yeah, there's before. a few different form factors as well. Right. We've gone for the Ultimo Plus because it's got all the bells and whistles. And right, okay. We are Stuff Magazine, and yeah, yeah. we like <laughs> bells and whistles. Right, right. Um, but they've got one that looks more like an analog watch. They've got one that looks uh, a bit more stylish, something you know, a bit less techy looking. Right. So they've got various options. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to follow them cool. with interest. Yeah, I think cool. they, they, they had uh, the first generation of this product was available uh, earlier in this year um, and ad admittedly not a huge amount of happened but they're definitely moving on now as Fraser cool. says with a bunch of products and, and I think the Ultimate Plus looks really interesting and something a little bit different. Yeah, uh, so we know that Tom really liked the Hexo uh, the best. What was your particular favourite on a personal level, Fraser? Any, anyone stand out? I think all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else at, C at CS uh, But in a particular, uh, I'm quite excited about the Casio because, right. as you know, I'm extremely outdoors. You are, you are. <laughs> I am, I'm like Bear Grylls. Right. Uh, <laughs> so I always want to know exactly what height I'm at, for example. Right. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm quite excited about that. That's sort of the, the, the higher expensive end. Um, the Misfit Ray, yeah. the little subtle one. Yeah, yeah, yeah because I also like to put a nice dress on of an evening <laughs> and go out without, you know, looking too geeky. Right, of course. <laughs> tonight, hopefully, that will be. Well, Fingers yeah, crossed. tonight. Uh, Fingers crossed. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, you can find out more about our wearable awards as well as our ongoing coverage of CES 2016 on Stuff TV. And if you're in here, here in Vegas, uh, we'll be back tomorrow with the What Hi-Fi guys. So thanks very much for joining us.